I'm your host, Marsha Florence for Just Ask. Today's show, ladies and gentlemen, is Warriors on Wheels of Metropolitan Detroit. Hurry back and join us. I'm your host, Marshall Florence for Just Dance. Today's show, ladies and gentlemen, is Warriors on Wheels of Metropolitan Detroit. And we have the president and founder herself, Lisa Franklin. Good morning, Lisa. Good morning, Marsha. Thank you so much for having me here. Thank you, Lisa. Mm -hmm. Now, Lisa, you know what? I, I, I know myself something about wheels, uh, Warriors on Wheels, but I need for you to kindly, if you would, tell us a little about yourself and Warriors on Wheels of Metropolitan Detroit. Not a problem. It started in 2008, but in 1996, I was injured by a drunk driver um, in an accident on Seven Mile and Outer Drive in Detroit. I was a passenger in a van on the back bench, and I was asleep. It was a full-size van. There were five of us. My husband was driving, my cousin was in the passenger, and two of my girlfriends were in the center, and I was laying down on the back bench. And as you know, in 1996, they really weren't enforcing um, seat belts. And so I woke up a week later in ICU and they said that an uh, 18 year old drunk driver broadsided the van, ran the red light and broadsided the van and it flipped several times and I was ejected. Wow. Well, my husband, uh, who was in trained EMT at the time, uh, they found me like 20 feet from the van. My cousin, they called everybody's name and I didn't answer. And so they couldn't get out because all the doors were jammed because the van had rolled. Mm -hmm. And so uh, my cousin kicked out, Mark kicked out the windshield and they found me. And my husband being trained EMT, when the fire department got there, they tried to pick me up from my ankles and, and my arms. And he said, oh no, you won't. You get a C collar on her and put her on a flat board. And so they did that and I'm sure that that uh, kept me mm -hmm. from being, you know, right. even so, injured even oh worse yeah. than I was. So I had a level T6 spinal cord injury my right wrist was crushed and several broken ribs. And I woke up a, a week later in ICU. Okay, okay. And I'm sure that accident alone had changed your, your life. Changed your life. And so now, because you're the founder and the president, well, along with that accident, did you find it difficult to get benefits, services, go on more so and less with your life? Well, you know, um, the benefits and the services, you know how the attorneys will come to the hospital if you're in a car accident. So that kind of started right away, but just getting used to the fact of how to maneuver using a wheelchair. I mean, when I woke up in ICU, I was ready to get rolling because I couldn't, I couldn't move, you know, so I knew that it was something seriously, you know, wrong with uh, my mobility. And I was just ready to get in a wheelchair and move on because I just thank God that I was still here. But um, after years of rehabilitation, um, that's where the organization came into play. I was sitting in the car one day because um, my daughter would go grocery shopping and I was sitting in the car. And she was in the store and I heard this advertisement come on the radio from Miss Wheelchair Michigan. And so I wrote the number down and I said, you know, my daughter, it was 2006, she was getting ready to graduate from high school. She was the youngest, so I wanted to do something. So I ran and I placed first runner up. Okay. And you know, Miss Wheelchair Michigan was um, a, a, a pageant for the most articulate person to mm -hmm. uh, portray their platform. And so my platform was I wanted to see an inclusive, um, accessible community. And so um, that is how I placed uh, first runner up. And so from there, they said, You got to do something with this. And I said, I am. And there were like seven women in that pageant at the time. So we started Women on Wheels, but then an attorney friend of mine said, you might want to include men in okay. this. <laughs> okay. But I really liked the acronym mm -hmm. WILES, and I mm -hmm. wanted to keep that. So believe it or not, I pulled out a thesaurus, and I started searching for another, uh, and Warriors on Wheels was born. And okay. that was in 2008 when I registered a name, and we became a 501c3, and we have regular monthly meetings, 
and we have volunteers and we've got a wonderful group of uh, board members and members who are very faithful and dedicated to okay. the organization. Okay, so you, so really, Lisa, to be quite you know truthful with you, your life was 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 going in this direction for a reason. I believe everybody okay. has a purpose. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. And, and you know, and you know, and I and I really prayed about it. And when I woke up, I said, God, okay, I'm yours. You just show me mm -hmm. where I need to be and what I need to do. And I can't believe some of the doors that have opened up because I've tried to be obedient and it's passion driven. And yeah, okay. Here I right. am on the Marsha Florence. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well now, yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, part of Just As what we like to do is make sure that the viewers uh, throughout the state of Michigan and part of Canada realize some of the services that are out here. Okay, the organizations, the support groups, um, the devices, things that we very know little, little, little very about. Mm -hmm. Sorry, very yes. little about. That's right. But we want to make sure that you have it, or if you don't have it, you know where to get it. Okay. Okay, so well, with you being here today, yes. it's enlightening for people who are wheelchair users to know that there is an organization that support them in some of their needs. There's lots of organizations out there, but Warriors on Wheels, what we try to make sure is that public places are accessible. You know, we try to make sure that you can maneuver through the streets. You know, if you go to the doctor's appointments, the door openers there, there are uh, examination tables that you can uh, easily access. Um, when you go into stores that where you normally go for grocery shopping or what mm -hmm. have you, that you can maneuver through the aisleways. Um, and some of the things we did to make sure that some of the politicians were sensitive to it is we did a, um, a little experiment with city council and we put them all in wheelchairs for a day. Okay. And so we gave them a route so that they could maneuver through the downtown streets and we gave them routes to like some of the businesses that weren't accessible mm -hmm and um, the people mover station that wasn't accessible. And they were really enlightening some of the things that weren't done in the city. And so um, there are a lot of services out there, a lot of resources out there. And that's some of the things that we do. We've gained a lot of those resources so that when people come to us, we're able to give them here. What do you need? You need ramping. You need um, for your home to be made, modified. Mm -hmm. um, if you need um, some type of adaptive equipment, we, okay. do wheelchair, we do wheelchair events, we do uh, sporting events, we go bowling, you know, yeah. I like to kayak, you wow. know, in the summertime. Oh, we've got even one person that's jumped out of a plane, a tandem jump out of a plane. Okay. You know, so we don't, we don't sit at home and we're really a support group. We support one, one another. We're like a family, you know, and if somebody needs something, mm -hmm. you know, I get calls all the time. Transportation is a big thing, you know. Right. And so, um, yeah, there are a lot of resources out there, so. Um, well, you have to know for sure that when this show airs, that the viewers will be trying to locate you. So are you guys a nonprofit? Do you have a, a phone number that you can give out? Yes, our phone number is area code 313-268-2851. Okay, okay. That is our phone number, and we have a website. Okay. Uh -huh. It's um, WOW, the number four, MetroDetroit.Weebly.com. Okay, so yes. you gotta tell us that one again. Yeah, absolutely, please. 313-268-2851 is our phone number, and our website is http colon backslash backslash w-o-w for MetroDetroit.Weebly.com. Okay, okay. Now that four, is that the number four or the word four? Number four. Okay. While so. four, the number four, Metro Detroit. Dot yes. Okay, okay, because mm -hmm. we do know some organizations use the number four, so we want to make sure. Okay. Thank you. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. So now, 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 Lisa, what I was thinking was that, you know, if for your visit with us today is to let people know what's going on in the communities. And I noticed that you said you guys are the Metropolitan Detroit. Okay, so are you a chapter or a division? There, there are no more chapters currently, but mm -hmm. I've had people call me from Tennessee, and from um, other areas around, it's really some of the southern states, mm -hmm. to see if we could start up a chapter. And we have not done that yet. This is our 10th year, and we hope to expand. But uh, we still got a lot of work to do right here in, in, in Michigan, in the city of Detroit. And so that's what we're really concentrating on. But um, no, we are the first. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. So but if the other states are interested, you guys will in the future plan to 
expand. Yes, yes, we could do that. We okay, could do that. Okay. We well, could be, that. It, it must, I mean, I'm sure it's most helpful anywhere, okay, because people are from all over are experiencing something, you know, in relations to becoming a wheelchair user. So, you know, your history in itself, 10 years, is, is a good thing. And I'm sure somebody Thank wants you. to, you know, uh, be a, a part of your organization. And I'm telling you, everywhere I go, you can see, you know, be, because you're in it, wherever you go, you take it with you. Oh, yeah. I went to uh, Belize, uh, Central America, to visit my sister. Mm -hmm. And we're working with the airline now to make their airport a little more accessible because they had to carry me onto the plane and off the plane. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. But they have the cruise ships that, that go there now. Mm -hmm. And they've got the ramping systems for the cruise ships, but they don't have it at the airport. But there are three airlines that come into the airport in Belize City. And so well, we'll have to get them to make some changes thank you very in Michigan. Much. Yes. So I tell you what, we're going to take a break and we'll be right back with some more good information of Warriors on Wheels, Metropolitan Detroit. We'll be right back. Do you know what this is? This is a life saving tool, a gun safety lock. Over the years, I have reported stories on many accidental shootings simply because a gun was not properly locked. Invest in a gun lock. Support Project Child Safe and get a free gun lock from your local police departments. Let's protect our children and community. Let's invest in safety. And welcome back to the second half of the show. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you're just not joining us like you usually are, I'm here today with Lisa Franklin, and she's the president and founder of Warriors on Wheels the Metropolitan Detroit chapter. Well, we're going to say chapter. Is it a chapter? Well, no, because we don't have any other chapters currently. Oh, okay. So we're the, Sorry. the founding. Okay. Yeah. okay, well, you know what? You guys may expand, though. I mean, if you're in the Michigan area and you're doing well as you are and there's other states trying to contact you, then you'll turn into a chapter, right? We pray and we hope so because it's needed around the world. Yeah, it is. You will. You around will. Okay. World. So for now, they're not a chapter. It's Metropolitan Detroit. Yes. Okay. Okay, but Lisa... Excuse me, we left off with some good information. Now, I do know that, it, and, and one of the main issues and things I think is on the table is housing. Okay, can you tell us a little bit about, are you guys doing anything with the legislation to do anything about housing, or, or is there anything on the table to talk about persons in wheelchairs needing or wanting housing? And housing is very, very important because we want to live independently. And if you are under the age of senior, 62 years old, it's very hard to find housing that's accessible for you. And then a lot of times you have family members that don't, um, aren't able to um, take you into their home and you want to live independently. So right now I am working with a coalition for affordable housing with the city of Detroit. It's a um, ordinance that was introduced by Mary Sheffield. And uh, with that coalition, we're making sure that um, housing developments are affordable for at least at least 40 percent of the units of the um, developments are 40 percent affordable for the um, at least 40 percent under the a AMI which okay. is the average uh, medium income for mm -hmm. the area and what I sat on the board to do was to make sure that some of those units were set, as uh, set aside also for people with challenges and so we did this for almost a year and the bill was introduced maybe about a month and a half ago. We did a press conference out in front of City Hall. And much to my surprise, the, Ford, the uh, accessibility piece was pulled from the ordinance. Really? Okay. Yeah, it's very interesting. And we've been trying to get a meeting with uh, Mary Sheffield ever since that happened to get an explanation why. Okay. Because it's very important, and that's why we sat on the board to make sure that people with uh, disability, with disabilities and challenges, had an opportunity to get uh, to some heard. of these, yeah, oh, to yeah. be heard and to right. get uh, some of these uh, into some of these new developments. Right. You know, and that's a, that's the thing too. A lot of people don't realize, and I often wonder if a person is a, a, a wheelchair user and the house has been modified for them. Uh, when they move on, if they pass, or if they move somewhere else, that house should have a good market rate because there is someone else who may have similar challenges as well. Mm -hmm. But sometimes what happens is people who buy a home end up uh, dismantling the um, the porch or whatever, you know, with the railings and stuff for the accessibilities. And it seemed like it would just be a different kind of market 
for housing when it comes to persons in wheelchairs needing those accommodations. Because by law, if, if it depends on how, how much property you have, you may can't have the ramp in front of your house. You have to have the ramp in the back of your house or in the side of your house. But why is it that we don't look at these houses in particular with the ramps and other modifications as a true value for the next person who may be a wheelchair user? And we should, and I think the developer should even um, trying to channel in right. on that because I mean uh, mm -hmm. even if you purchased a home that that has uh, that's accessible and has a ramp mm -hmm. you may have a relative that wants to come over Correct. to visit you may have friends that want to come over and visit Correct. you know it, it it puts us out of so many different areas yes. because of lack of it's ex you know what you know. but to be truthful most people only recognize these issues when it's theirs okay and I hate to say it like that but if it's not in your home it's not happening in, you know, in your neighborhood, right then there, you're like, oh, they want me to do what? Uh, so we don't want everyone to have to have a disability to recognize the needs, you know, for us to be accommodated. Exactly. And I do mean us. Right. So I look at it as though, you know, hey, if you are a person of fairness, take in consideration that, you know, your business can expand if you ha offer these types of services to persons with disabilities so that they can come to the restaurant or they can go to the library or they can shop in that store or they can purchase that house or they can buy and operate that car. We do not have all of our businesses wrapped up and involved equally. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so, and, and I, I'm, I'm sorry I had to put it out there like that, but, you know, in, in the area that I work in, I can see that it's never been an equal flow right. unless. Right. You know, it's the, it's, it happens to <laughs> right. If it happens to someone in the upper echelon. And what's so interesting, if they just did a universal design, I mean, mm -hmm. they wouldn't have to spend as much money to go back and try to modify it. You know, if they did it, make the doors wide enough, right. make the hallways wide right. enough. You know. Yeah, but oh, have gosh. the option for like the the famous bathtub now. You know, that people can just sit down in the bathtub. You know, I think it's the little standing one. So okay, we, we should have options for the type of showers to the type of bathtub. Rolling showers. Everything I mean, right. Yeah, you know, and absolutely. especially if a person is purchasing the house and is being built while they purchase. I heard that it's cheaper to have those uh, accommodations made when the house when is the house not is built. built. Right. Correct. But if if I had purchased the house later then there should still be some type of written rule or law that I can change this and it, the house value will not go down. And there is a law in the ADA, not okay. with houses, but with apartment buildings mm -hmm. and um, the common areas have to be accessible. Okay. I know that I moved out to Dearborn and the uh, um, complex where I moved, when I moved there, they were renovating the clubhouse. And I asked the uh, builders when they were renovating, I said, oh, so you're going to make the entrance accessible? And they said, uh, no, we're not. I said, what do you mean? I said, this is a common area. I, I get to come in the clubhouse mm -hmm. just like everybody else who pays their rent here. And um, they said, well, we went to city council. They approved it and said that we didn't have to. So this is where we need advocates and allies mm -hmm. around in every right. area right. to speak out to make sure that places like that public places are accessible we don't I mean it would be nice for us to be at all the tables but mm -hmm. a lot of times we can't be at the table so we need people to be um, aware of the challenges that people with disability have and so that's one of the programs that we're doing right now it's called our story could be yours okay and that just okay. as simple as that our story could be yours I was hit by a drunk driver changed my life. I used to, I was able-bodied for 36 years, you know, and now 22 years later, you know, here I am, you know, trying to maneuver and fighting for some of the things that are due to me right. by law, right. you know, and we have to vocalize that. Mm -hmm. It's not fair and it's not right. One of my friends said, well, maybe we shouldn't have to pay taxes, you know, if if they won't they won't abide by the law that affects us, right. then why should we have to pay taxes? Right, right. <laughs> it's an and interesting concept. Anything, right. an in but well, then, I'm sure, like you know, after today, you know, some of the people who are watching our show will be in in awe to want to contact you and say, hey, you know, let's let's make this a public announcement that housing is not fair. You know, transportation is not fair. So everything that's not fair, you know, you guys need to. Uh, speak about it out loud and advocate, you know, so that it, the next group of individuals who come along the way will even have it more easier, you know, or will know what to advocate for. Absolutely. People don't know what to advocate for if it's never been a stands in the first place. Well, we have meetings once per month at Fellowship Chapel, 
And uh, they're the first Monday of the month, every month, at okay. Fellowship Chapel from 2 to 4, and that's 7707 West Outer Drive. And so we're looking for allies. We're looking for um, volunteers, you know, people that just want to know more. If you need resources, you know, come on out and, and, and join the group. Um, you can check on our website for all of the dates of different things that we have. You know, give us a call and just see how we're doing. You know, if you know someone that needs to get out, we have people that are just really locked in their house because they don't know what to, what, where to go and what right. to do. Right. And I'm telling you, when it happened to me, I just thank God that I was still alive and I was ready to move on. But I met a lot of people that don't really understand that there's any life after Okay. You know, something tragically happening to them. But it's the, not the yeah, end of the world. It's not. It well, at least I tell you what, we're going to take a break. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, you know, get your pen and paper out and take down the phone number and the website. You know you need to volunteer. We'll be right back. Thank you. Three out of four kids are not as secure as they should be because their car seats are not used correctly. But the latch system makes it easier to get it right and to hold your kids tight. Anchor. Tether. Latch. Learn more at safercar.gov. And welcome back to the last half of the show. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know about you, but I always tell you, you get an education when you tune in to Just Ask Talk Show. So today, uh, Lisa Franklin, the president and founder herself, is enlightening us on services and things that go along in the world of Warriors on Wheels. So now, I'm going to ask Lisa this question because I know somebody in the wheelchair community is saying you never did say anything about that. Lisa, do you know... Uh, it, within the state of Michigan or wherever have us in Michigan, how many persons are wheelchair users? Well, I'll tell you, in the city of Detroit, and this is from the 2010 census, there's over 165,000 people that are wheelchair users in the city of Detroit. And 60% of that number are low, are low income. Okay. And so there are services there for people who are uh, low income. And uh, we're talking about... Um, between caregivers and case managers and mm -hmm. people that can come help you in your home. And these services are available to you if you're low income and you're getting SSI. So mm -hmm. if you're not receiving those benefits, then you should be receiving them through um, social, social service office, through um, your, your okay. manager, your case manager. Yes. So a lot of people don't know that they can go to DHS, social service, or whatever the title is this year, and find out that they can get additional assistance. But were there, is there any support services for families? Because a lot of times the family is the caregiver. Okay. There's peer mentoring <laughs> programs out here. DMC has a wonderful peer mentoring program to help you through uh, the challenges if you have to make a transition, if someone in your family becomes a wheelchair user. And something else that a lot of people don't know is that um, you can get a brand new wheelchair every five years. And really? I've, uh, yes, when okay. you, um, yes, when you're receiving benefits from the state. Uh, every five years and so I've seen a lot of people that are not utilizing mm -hmm. that and there's some basic things that uh, you can you know have if you go and you get a case manager or you get uh, talk to your um, your um, service provider mm -hmm. at uh, on the state level and there's a lot of okay. things that uh, so now let me ask you this so the case manager a lot of people don't know how to get a case manager well a lot of times um, the case manager comes with accident auto accident okay um, uh, auto mm -hmm. accident cases. Mm -hmm. You're in automatically entitled to a case manager, um, home health care, um, attendant care, and there's some other lost wages and different things that you can have mm -hmm. um, if you're an auto accident uh, person. So these are the types of things that we can educate you on if you, um, you know, call our um, organization and we can put you in touch with different people. We have case managers, we have attendant care, we have private duty nurses, you know that we're okay. in contact with. And so um, um, it can be a really, really devastating um, event in, in someone's life I'm if they sure. don't know where to turn. I'm sure. And so um, it's very helpful to have someone out there that you can talk to okay. that can get you into the right places. Okay. Now, you know, I, gotta, I always have something on my table. Oh. So, okay, you have a brochure here. So if a, a person was to call and ask for some information, what would they find in this brochure? That brochure tells them a little bit about some of the things that we've done over the years and uh, some of the grants that we've gotten and what we've done with the grants. And um, it just talks about the pride of the organization. Okay. And yes. Okay, so they can get some resources and then some contacts from you guys when they call you. When they call us at 
1-800-242-2851. And you can also Google Warriors on Wheels and yeah. Um, yeah, with your cell phone or whatever, and all of our information will now come up Now, if they Google there. Warriors on Wheels, they have to Google Warriors on Wheels, the Metropolitan Detroit. Well, they can Google just Warriors on Wheels, <coughs> and, and we, we will come up. Now, okay. there is a Warriors on Wheels in New York. Okay. That's a veteran. It's, it's, it's a veteran mm -hmm. organization. Okay. Yeah, but uh, Warriors on Wheels. Okay. And you guys just had an event. So is this your annual black tie event? What did you just have? The black tie event is going to be by. It's, we're going to do it every two years. Okay. Because um, it's a pretty big deal. I'm sure. And it's a wonderful fundraiser. Lee Thomas. Lee Thomas was our guest speaker. And we had a mime group. And we had Darren McKinney play the saxophone. We have 12-year-old okay. um, Ashley Sims who played the violin. She's with the Detroit Symphony Orchestra Youth Group. Okay. And then we had testimonies, testimonies of uh, some of our members who have challenges. Like we have one gentleman who was shot when he was five years old. Mm -hmm. And he got infected at 16 years old and lost both of his legs. And yeah. so he's basically a torso. And mm -hmm. so he's had some huge hurdles right. in the community, you know, maneuvering through mm -hmm. the community because of the misconceptions that people have mm -hmm. of people who use wheelchairs. And it's really, um, a cult we have to change that culture. Yeah. You know, we really you do. Know, and let me ask you this, just uh, before closure, what would be the proper term for persons uh, using wheelchairs that a person who doesn't use a chair know what to say? Not wheelchair bound, mm -hmm. not confined to a wheelchair. Basically put the person first. That's what, that's what we Correct. teach. We teach mm -hmm. person first. So person who uses a wheelchair, you know, for mobility. Person who is hearing impaired. Person mm -hmm. who is visually impaired. Mm -hmm. You know, we always put the person first. Right, so. right. You know, and we just got to get to that habit. And a lot of people who don't have disabilities or family members or friends, they say, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You don't have to be sorry. No, no. Just, you know, just ask. Right. Just okay. absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You're absolutely Just right. Ask, I love you know, it. That's it'll, right. It'll work That's out right. for you better, you know, in learning what's the proper terminology. And something that just, uh, you know, bugs people in wheelchairs to no end is someone, you know, touching their space. No, you're not to lean on someone's wheelchair. That's their space, right. you know. Right. So. Uh, it, it's just really been interesting the things that I've learned over the years. And okay, okay. Been able to share with other people. Right, well, today it. you shared the wealth of information. Will you well, come I'm back sure. again? Lisa? I sure would. Okay. Absolutely. And I'll bring someone with me <laughs> okay. if you'd like to. We can have well, a deep conversation. Okay, we surely can. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you and so anytime. much. No, we appreciate you coming and we'll get the word out for you. And we need that phone number and website one more time. 313-268-2851 is the phone number and the website is HTTP colon backslash backslash w o w for the number four metro detroit dot weebly dot com and if you can't do that just google warriors on wheels okay okay mm -hmm. okay well lisa franklin will you come back and join us again thank you for having me this time yes i would absolutely come back i'd love to all right we're looking forward to thank it. you very much okay well ladies and gentlemen you know what i always say every time you tune in you learn something new here on just ask so today uh with miss lisa franklin founder and uh president of warriors on wheels i hope you learned something and took down the number and give them a call and let them know if you can support their efforts but if you miss us on our morning channel channel 56 at 5 30 a.m you know, you can catch us all day long on your local cable station, Comcast Detroit, Comcast Southfield, Bright House, Wide Open West, Spectrum, West Bloomfield, Birmingham, Lansing, Lake Orin. Take your pick, and if we don't have you, we'll have you soon. So well, who am I? I'm your host, Marsha Florence with Just Ask, and what do I always say? If you know a person with a disability or if you just have a general question, don't be afraid to ask Just Ask. I'm your host. Thank you. <laughs>